excited to be sharing my kitchen with good friends. Pleasure. <laughs> and very impressive CV carriers. Ooh. He's a bit too humble to tell you about now, so if you Google Rob Reese, Thank you very much. <laughs> you'll be able to find out all about him. And today you've got something that is quite a traditional kind of dish, but it's quite accessible to home cooks. I think so. I think it lifts it slightly to, uh, you know, if you've got ladies or friends that come around for lunch, yeah. this is the sort of thing that you can get done in advance. It's, it's more of a chuck it in a pan kind of stuff. Oh, um, we like that. Use the flavours and the wonderful herbs and spices. And of course, it's a traditional French background, uh -huh. and that's, that's my... My culinary background has always been French. So you might not be as comfortable cooking duck at home, but we're going to cook a duck confit today. Where does the word come from? <laughs> confit uh, comes from confiture. So when you have confiture, that's used for French for jam. So confit is actually a process. Mm -hmm. It's a slow process of cooking. So when you make a jam, you slowly tick over the fruits mm -hmm. with sugar and water very, very gently. So and low and slow. Low and slow. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Low and slow with the duck. So you're going to prepare the duck legs. Can I help you to, because there's a lot of flavours going on here, so I might need to get a head start for you. Yes, please. Take the zest off of the orange, the lime and the lemon, and that's going to give us a lovely perfume that's going to go in with our duck legs. And meanwhile, I'm just cleaning up the knuckle off of our duck legs here. And that way, when it cooks that slow and low, mm -hmm. the bone will come back and it'll be lovely, nice and clean. Excellent. So it's tidying up for appearance, but also it gives a little bit more access and penetration to the bone. So Absolutely. in terms of flavour, yep. all of that sort of stuff. And what you're getting, because it is that slow cooking, the fat is going to render itself out mm -hmm. and all the flavours of the herbs and the spices are going to be absorbed into the duck. Excellent. So whilst we've got these different ones here at the moment, we've got some cinnamon going in, we've got some cloves, Got some star anise, beautiful stuff. And you haven't got to roast any of these. It's not like making a curry where uh -huh. you're roasting to intensify and they're just gonna go in and because it's slow, mm -hmm. they'll come out. We've got some five spice. You've got a garlic. bit of a funny story about duck, <laughs> I believe, Rob. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you have to go back a long while. So I've been cooking nearly 35 years, right, in the in, in the industry uh, and doing lots of different things. But when I first started at the Royal Crescent Hotel in Bath in the UK, I was working in the larder section. There was there must have been 20 chefs there, uh -huh. and we were prepping ducks whole. So we had the whole thing. We had the, the necks, the beaks, you name it on it. And I'm taking the ducks all off the bone, and my head chef says to me, "Look, if you blow down the neck, the neck, <laughs> you'll hear it quack." <laughs> And Don't try this at home, kids. And it's a, no. <laughs> or young 16-year-old chefs that are trying to make an impression. So I pick up this duck and neck and literally blow down its neck, thinking this thing is going to quack. So, yeah, it's, it's sad, but true. All of that olive oil, uh -huh. don't be frightened of it, mm -hmm. is going to go into this duck and you're just gonna you're just gonna cover the duck leg. So because we're cooking it low and slow, you actually don't change the nutrient quality or density of the olive oil. So because it maintains its colour, that's a really good indicator. It's, it's a really good thing. Uh, you're gonna bring that onto the heat and literally just bring that up to the boil. Mm -hmm. Put a lid on it. We've got pass me that tin foil. Uh -huh. We'll bring that up to the boil. Fold that over so there's no flavour going to escape. Mm -hmm. And that will go into our oven. So in terms of this being a very traditional kind of a recipe, yeah. we could use this and serve it with a whole range of things. You can. Um, traditionally, it'd be served with cassoulet. You know, so you'd have, the, you'd have the lovely beans, you'd have lardons in there and things like that. We're going to do it with a simple celeriac salad, some mm -hmm. sautéed spinach, um, and just a tiny um, uh, sauce of honey, balsamic vinegar, and red wine. <laughs> Wonderful. So we're putting it into the oven. I can hear it's boiling. You can just hear it ticking away underneath there. And Hot enough. And that's going to go in, into our oven. So our duck is in the oven, mm -hmm. and you were just telling me that you could put it in for 100 degrees yeah. up to six hours? I think yeah, 100 degrees for six hours is going, going to have no damage. Mm -hmm. uh, still going to be lovely and tender and yep. fall apart. Uh, 140 gives you a maximum of four hours. Do you want to start prepping the celeriac for this me? This beautiful, ugly, very tasty oh, it's fantastic. ingredient. Let me just grab this one for mixing the dressing. So celeriac counts as one of your veggie portions of the day, whereas your potatoes don't. <laughs> It's and it needs a little oomph. It does need a little bit of oomph. It's got a beautiful flavour. It's a strong celery flavour, uh, without a shadow, of a shadow of a doubt. And because I'm um, only using half, I'm just going to yep. wipe this. And that stops it from going brown. No oxidisation, um, you know, a little bit you, of acidity. You, you really don't want that to happen. And you really can smell that 
Beautiful celery flavour. And it's gorgeous. And seriously, just cook it in exactly the same way as you would um, potatoes. So, you know, something like a dauphinoise. You know, ah, slice thinly, beautiful. cook with a little bit of cream, uh, lots of garlic, and green So you can cheese. treat it like any other root vegetable. Exactly the same. In here, I've just mixed together some sugar, some mustard, some mayonnaise, uh, and we'll add a little bit of uh, chopped parsley to go in there as well. Um, it could be coriander, it could be thyme, it could be rosemary. Play around with this, it's whatever your favourites, whatever your favourite perfumes and flavours in the kitchen are. I'm just making a very quick sauce. This actually can be quite a Spanish feel to it, moving on ah. from the French. So you're, quite often you get your chorizo sausages and things that cook down a little bit of red wine, honey and vinegar. Um, so this sauce is very similar. So we've got a little bit of red wine, <laughs> we've got a touch of clear honey and some balsamic vinegar, and we put that all together and we just leave that on the heat till it reduces down and goes nice and sticky. Excellent. If you could put that celeric in there with my Is mayonnaise, that that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. We don't want it to be you know, too sloppy with the mayonnaise. We want it just to combine together. And that simple, that on its own is lovely. Lovely salad on its own. So this is reducing down nicely. And then the final garnish that we're going to put with this will be some sautéed spinach. So it looks like your reduction is just about ready. I'm going to get the duck out. Thank you. Yeah, we just need it to be slightly thicker so it gives you that, that drizzle effect. Oh, lovely. Now. Yeah, you should get this lovely smell that, Ooh, that, that pops yeah. up. Oh, yeah. That makes me very happy. You've got slightly crispness going on, which is what you're after. So we can do this in advance. We could make a stack load of that reduction in advance. You can. Put that in a container. You can do this around about half an hour to stop the, um, any longer than that and the celeric goes brown. And so then you need to do very, very quickly some pan fried spinach. The Lovely. hissing has stopped. Uh -huh. That's when you know the butter is ready. In goes your spinach. That was swept down into hardly anything at all. A little bit of nutmeg. It's the classic with spinach. Nutmeg is my most favourite spice in the world. I love it. If it's the one thing. I could always have on my desert island, it would be, it would be nutmeg. And sweet or savoury, I uh, love it. Both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, you see look, the liquid has more or less gone out of that straight away. So our spinach is sweating down, I can almost take that off the heat now uh -huh. and let that sit. Let's serve this in one big dish rather than individually plated, that's up to you, however you're hosting it. Give it a little shake so the excess oil isn't there. Now, duck actually has very low levels of saturated fat. Huh. Um, you know, it's still duck and it's still saturated fat, like the butter, but it is a lower level fat. And so people might actually be scared of doing that because they think it is a, a fattier option. They think it's a very unhealthy meat and it actually it's the opposite of that. There you go. Where would you like your duck? Uh, just stick it so the bone is sticking up that way and we'll try and crisscross them over each other. Give it that no presentation. Pressure. No, you've got it, you've got it. Now that is something very special all that all of you might sort of be a bit scared to recreate at home, but you've seen that it's essentially three steps that you can do in advance, except for sort of your fresh option, which you can buy at the markets that day. Thank you so much for being here, Rob. It's a pleasure. And thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with Australia and I love working with you here. I love working with you, you out in the community and you can come back anytime. Thank you very much. Especially when you're making me duck confit for lunch.